Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a busy Tuesday. Goodness, talking about big earthquake activity here across the globe. A lot of large-scale movement taking place here following this morning's super deep earthquake in the Banda Sea area, 6.1. 365 miles to deep, uh, yeah, 65 miles deep here, 365 into this area. And I uh, said to be on guard, watch this area as these big quakes tend to uh, bring on the uptick of earthquake activity. Also, we got, uh, looks like an X flare coming in right now. Well, way up there into the X flare category. Let me back out of there real quick. Um, yeah, we are in the X flare category and we're going up and up and up. Hasn't even stopped yet. Uh, this is coming from, I believe, an Earth-directed solar sunspot. Uh, Going to be this area right here. Look at that. That's just pre-flaring. It's a couple minutes old here. This is uh, 2206. It's now 2219. So we haven't even begun to see the X-flare that's kicking up. But it's continuing to rise into the, the high X-flare category. Goodness, this could be a an extreme event. Big time. Make sure I'm still live. The internet's still here. Haven't been uh, knocked off the internet yet, but look at that. No sign of it uh, peaking either. This is right now in the x category as a... Let me go back here and double check this. Uh, that shows an M5.5, but it, that is not right. Look at that. Way up here in the x category. X3.5 so far. No sign of it uh, dying down yet. And, uh, man, are we getting a strong, probably R3 radio blackout right now on the sunlit side of the Earth. This uh, affects uh, a lot of different frequencies out there, uh, mainly in the high-frequency, low-frequency navigation systems. Talk about around shortwave and whatnot. But uh, that's uh, significant out there in the Central Pacific. I'm just waiting to see when this is going to stop, if it stops. And I'm waiting for the flare update here. It's going to be, I'm sure, a beautiful image. I'm guessing it's from this area. Uh, a look at complexity here real quick. That is going to be sunspot number one of these. I believe it's going to be the center one or maybe this one back here now. Let me see. Yeah, it's going to be from this area. That has actually grown since this morning in terms of complexity. Uh, that is where that uh, massive looking feature is coming from right now, right here. And again, this is pre-eruption, pre-solar uh, uh, flare. Notice the time here. So we're just waiting on an update from that. Let me talk about earthquake activity real quick. California jumping in on some movement this morning prior to all the large scale activity. Uh, three pointer coming into the Ontario area. This was originally a 3.9, got downgraded to a 3.1, and now a 3.5. So <laughs> a lot of folks reported feeling this earthquake quite strongly out there across the area. And, um, you know, 3.1, it, it just didn't seem right. So I, I knew there was something going on there. Either way, they upgraded it to a 3.5. And then uh, almost immediately following this activity there in Southern California, we started seeing some big earthquake activity out west here. Uh, 6.6 in the Tonga area. Um, the Philippines had a near 6-pointer. That originally coming in as a 6.1, downgrade to a 5.9. Um, 6.1 early this morning seems to have set off a chain of events out here uh, in terms of plate adjustment. This is a super deep earthquake that struck about 2 o'clock my time, California time, out underneath the Banda Sea. Uh, it appears as uh, it definitely set uh, a chain of events out here in motion. Keep an eye on Southern California as well. We got one right smack dab on the San Andreas Fault, a little 0.7, and some activity here north of Lancaster in this little piece of land here that's uh, geographically noticeable, right? That's a Garlock Fault shear zone, the San Andreas Fault. A lot of strain builds up here across this big bend area southward, and that's where the 8.1 is expected um let's check back the flare here let me refresh this see what we got um still hasn't updated yet i can't remember the exact uh i think it updates about every 20 minutes or so if i remember right let's refresh this one see what we got whoa we're going way up there guys this may be one of the top flares we've seen in quite a while x 6.6 
Um, the X6 point or uh, X8, I believe, is the strongest solar flare so far this solar cycle. Um, yeah, X8.7 back in uh, May of this year. Are we going to beat it? Are we going to beat it? And you know what's really crazy about this is that it's uh, Earth directed big time right here in this position if it and i'm certain almost certain this thing is going to blast off a large cme just the way that this uh, activity looks unless it's coming from this region it's hard to tell exactly right now uh, but this looks like the more probable source of that uh, strong flare that's coming in but i notice this area is lighting up as well so we won't know until this updates and um, i am hoping it updates here x 3.6 it hasn't peaked out yet. That's that's what these guys are showing, but we're above that. We are above. We're into the uh, X6.6 category right here. That's a, <laughs> a little shy of the largest solar flare so uh, this solar cycle uh, so far. And looks like uh, we're not even... There's a little bit of curvature going on there, so that may mean that we're starting to uh, see the peak of it at X6.6. But let's just watch this and see... Um, what happens again no uh no update yet on the uv filter ray here the uv filter of the sun that normally gives us a good indicator of where the sunspot uh, or which sunspot is flaring and it's got to be i'm guessing it's from this region right here that looks like the only probable source but uh could be wrong either way a lot of earthquake activity stirring up prior to this space weather event, right? We're always talking about how space weather activity could trigger earthquakes. Well, <laughs> this is completely opposite. Earthquakes have triggered solar weather. Well, maybe not, but uh, just odd timing. A lot of large scale earthquake activity out here today after, you know, a couple days of quietness. You've seen uh, some of my videos here over the last couple days talking about how this area has gone absolutely quiet. And that has filled in in a big fashion today, starting with that 6.1 super deep earthquake underneath the band to sea area so things are set in motion out here folks that's a good time to be prepared and again all this activity happened prior to any space weather activity so i that's one for the charts again in the nay category that uh, all this earthquake activity was not associated with any solar flare there's the x flare right now again this just coming in following all the earthquake activity this morning it is from that sunspot there that I just uh, told you guys about. That uh, is probably not even the peak right there on this image. This was at 2216. We're at uh, 2226 UTC time. So I'm guessing maybe the next frame or so will show the brunt of it. But I am going to screen capture that because that is a beautiful shot, nonetheless, of a, uh, a large flare. And I believe that it's coming off of sunspot number let's see here it's going to be this area right down here so that's going to be 38 42 because this is an older image right now this was from uh, i believe this morning or even last night since then these have shifted further to the east here to the right side of the screen so we're looking at 38 42 being right about uh, right about here in this area of close proximity of magnetic structure. Look at that deepening core of that sunspot. And uh, that's going to be something to watch here. It doesn't look like uh, that is degrading. If anything, it looks like it's rapidly growing. And that could spell some trouble for some further exploring following this one. We get a couple of events here. We're going to have a similar aurora activity event like we've seen back in May where auroras were visible down uh, extremely low latitude southern california mexico florida all over the place so that's a significant flare now whether it has a cme associated with it or not will be um will be watched here so there is yeah, it looks like it's peaked out right there there's a sharp decline so maximum Ooh, came close guys came close to the maximum uh flare that would make it uh, X7.1 is going to be the second, right? If I remember right, second largest flare now this solar cycle. Let's see what we got. Yes, second largest solar flare. Just blew this one off the chart here. X6.3 that struck back in May. Uh, the significance of this event is that it's directly facing Earth. 
So no doubt uh, if anything does pop off from there, we'll be geo-effective 100%. Uh, hard to say, though. We'll have to wait for uh, the Space Weather Prediction Center to uh, analyze the images out there. But uh, goodness, that is a significant one. And again, radio blackout observed across the sunlit side of the Earth, centered over the Central Pacific there, Hawaii. And uh, yeah, all right. So I'm going to jump off here, get this video uploaded. A lot of earthquake activity ramping up prior to the space weather activity is not a cause of it. Uh, I, I'd feel different about this if I uh, had seen that X flare and then a whole bunch of sixes started popping up, but this is vice versa. So it's just another one, uh, you know, as far as immediate effects there, that solar flare activity does not affect earthquakes or does not uh, trigger earthquake activity out here. It's just, it's obvious right there. Uh, we've seen multiple sixes out here. Well, almost a six there in the Philippines, um, much prior to this space weather activity. That's black. Uh, it's right there, right in the color, black and white. Well, in color, so to speak here. So I'll be uh, I'll be watching everything out here, folks. Feeling a little little bit of energy kicking in, I think, from this uh, uh, solar flare. Now you know, doesn't mean that uh, the solar flare activity um, doesn't affect other stuff out here on the planet, like weather and um, other items. You know, a lot of people are sensitive to flares and they can feel when the energy is high. But in terms of earthquake, the theory of earthquake activity. Uh, Large-scale uptick following a solar flare event is uh, definitely in the no category right now. Uh, again, because all of this stirred up much prior to the arrival of the second largest solar flare, the solar cycle, solar cycle 25. Uh, the previous one there got blown out of the water. Goodness. There it is again. All right. I'm out of here, folks. Um We'll be out here kind of watching things. It's a super, super busy day. We'll catch you guys back here in a little bit.